have an under an undertone of love in the word today, but um, a big part of it is this idea of refreshing ourselves on the love, and that, that there are people in the Bible that needed that refreshment course, that needed that time frame to just be like, okay, I love you, I remember that now. Um, I, I sometimes will step out, out of my office. I, I love being close to the school because it reminds me to pray for the future of the church. It does. And every time that that bell rings, I know that one kid is coming out. I don't know the name of the kid at your recesses that can't stop screaming, but she's loud. She's loud. I can hear it through the walls of the church, and I, it's just a constant, Whoa! But I'm reminded to pray for them when I hear that. And it's kind of funny because sometimes I'll step out and I'll, I'll look on the, the, the field. I'll, I'll find you guys and I'll pray for you when I see you out there. But it's kind of neat how I see that there's a chunk of kids that still do what I did when I was in, in elementary school. And, and that was to rush to the field and play football. That's what I did. Yes, Logan gets it. That's what I did. And, and in the 90s, not to age, I'm pretty young, but in the 90s when I was in elementary school, uh, I, I'm guaranteeing they're, they're doing the same thing I did when I was in elementary school, which was to pick a current player and pretend you are them. I'm betting there's a lot of people out there going, yeah, I'll play Manny. You know, I get to be, I get to be demarish. I'm, I'm Adrian Peterson. You know, and you just pretend to play that character on the field. And for me in the '90s, that was Troy Aikman. Yeah, it was, it was Emmett Smith. It was Michael Irvin. Because the team of the '90s, whether you want to admit this or not, was the Cowboys. Okay. So sometimes people ask me, "How'd you become a fan?" Well, they were the team of the '90s. That's who I was. In 1993, they became the team I would enjoy. In 1995, the Cowboys would win their last Super Bowl. And, uh, and uh, for 21 years, every year, I will have a moment where I will take my Dallas Cowboy hat off and I'll put it on the shelf and I will say the phrase, you let me down. Now, I use this word superficial, superficially, very surface. And I will question why I love the Cowboys so much. Me too. Um, yeah, yeah, you get it? I'll go, why do I, love, why do I put so much time in past? Why do I watch the game? Why do I love them? And then this, I, I, I use the word again, just, just for fun here. This magical time frame will arrive called the NFL draft. And what will happen to me is I will watch the draft and we will get a few players and in free agency we'll get a few more players. And every year around the same time frame, I'll pull my hat back off the shelf, I'll put it on my, help, my, my head, and I will say, this is our year. And yes, for 21 years I recanted that. But, but I'll put my hat on and I'll go, this is our year. And I'm refreshed why I love the team because there's always a hope around the, the draft time frame. My hat is off the shelf right now. Just so you know, but I, sh I shared that illustration because you know, sometimes, friends, we just we need a refreshment course on love. We need a we need a little reminder that says, "Hey, this is love, and this is what it looks like in our lives." Because in life is life. Can I get an amen? Life takes up time. It bids for your love with stuff, and it will try to manipulate you away from a love for Christ. It will compete for your love with Christ. And sometimes if we let it get too thick in us, we might even have a devalued sense of love for the Almighty. Even if Easter was only two months away. Or wait, 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 wait. How long has it been? Three, three, weeks. three weeks. It's been three weeks ago. It's amazing how much three weeks can cause us to forget about one of the best days in human history because life is what it is. I have kids. Soccer season just started. It's busy because of that. You know, sometimes, and I say this often in, in marriage counseling, if, when, if I ever get blessed to do it, pre or post, one of the, the, the most frequent, frequent, I'm struggling with my words today, I apologize. One of the most frequented things I will say is never stop dating your spouse. Never stop that. Because life will happen. Kids will come. And, 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 and so one day you may even sit across your table and look at your spouse and go, man, I don't know yet. Who are you? Where's the time gone? 
So I encourage, you know, because love can be stressed like that. I encourage humanity to look at their spouses and to never stop dating them. Go on dates. I, I, um, I was too much of a chicken to uh, ask my, my father-in-law if I could marry his daughter. So I, I drew him a picture of, of, a, of a man bowing down in front of a woman asking for marriage and said, can I marry your daughter? And I snuck it in his lunchbox and I walked away. <laughs> and uh, he, 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 he uh, opened it before he left and he was like, Matt, get up here. And I was like, oh, he found the note. <laughs> and, I, and I got back up into uh, the, to the room there and he, he's holding the, the note and he goes, okay. <laughs> and he folds the note up and he walks back into his room and, uh, and he stuck it on his, his little dresser that he has and every once in a while I'll still sneak back into their room, they don't know this, I hope they're not watching, but I'll, I'll go look for that note and sometimes I'll find that note and, and I'll go, I love that woman, you know, and I'll put it back on his thing, it, just, it reminds me of why I loved her, that those years where things were just a little fresher, newer. I want, to, I want to refresh them in the love for Christ today, and I, I, I want to be honest with you too. This has been a, an interesting last couple of days. Last night I had a 101 degree fever, and so I'm coming in here today a little bit shaky. So if my words are out there today, my wife has got the same thing today, so I hope your kids aren't sick. Just go home and wash their hands or something like that. Um, and so I, I came in here this morning going, Lord, I just hope if the one thing that people hear today is to just have a, a renewed look at what that love is that we are to have with you. Last Sunday we talked about this time where Jesus comes to Peter and the other disciples and has a conversation with them on the seashore about their need to be close to him. And in our text today, Jesus is, is having a personalized conversation with Peter in a time that I'm going to call today very, very needed. Because Peter, even though we, we've, we've read the Easter story and I'm kind of following through on a pre-Pentecost uh, track right now, because there's a lot of cool stories that happened before the Spirit was unleashed. And I, I, I apologize, I don't hit those all the time. So I wanted to concentrate on some of these stories. And so here we have Jesus coming to Peter, and, and, and I've heard the word before, reinstating him and this love that he has uh, for each other. And so that's where we're at in the text, the conversation that takes place, y'all know it. It's probably not, you, some of you could probably quote this to you, but it's on the screen behind me. John chapter 21, 15 through 19. It says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. He said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things, and you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. Now, like I said, Peter has previously, sometimes we, we let two or three weeks go by and we, we think back to, to when Peter denied Jesus three times and, and, and you go, man, that was a long time ago. You know, why, why did Jesus take so long to reinstate Peter? Well, if you, if you read it all in one setting, you, you kind of get the quick reminder that this was only days, maybe maybe a week or so in which this had happened. And, and you can imagine, if you've ever like really let somebody down, a couple of days dwelling on that can really do a number in your soul. Can you get an, can, you know, can you get an amen? It, it really weighs on you. And that's where Peter's at. He, he really wants this moment with Jesus in which he can have a personal conversation to just, to, to just, to just say, I love you. Love you. They're, in fact, that's one of the things I want to. This is so rabbit trap when I'm feeling the spirit. This is one of those things that I also think we need to hear. You have loved ones in your life, right? And it's 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 one. It's unfortunately one of the hardest things for me as a pastor to hear when people come to me and say, "My my my father died," and and I wish before he died I could have at least 
talked about this. And then they'll give me the story and I'll go, oh. I so want to educate, just tell people to have conversations with people now before they go. Because I can't imagine, that's kind of where Peter's at. I, I'm betting, it's not written in scripture like that. We don't really know the emotion in his soul. But I'm betting it's there that he was just going, I just want one more personal conversation in which we can just talk about this. And kind of clear this up. And that's what's happening in this text. And now that's probably the last I'll talk about that today. Because I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to concentrate on that. What I want to concentrate on today is the do you love me questions. Okay? There's three questions, the three different different approaches to this do you love me question that I think we can look at today for ourselves. And again, Lord, please let your will be done. Be refreshed on how to love Jesus more intensely in our lives. So number one, Jesus, or Peter, do you love me more? Than these. So here we are, Peter and, 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 Je uh, and Jesus. I, I, I like to think are walking maybe down the shore. I think it's a funny depiction of it because it's kind of got the more than these conversation taking place. We got the fish, we got the boat, we got the other disciples, several of the meetings that Jesus could have been talking about when he said more than these. And even though I'll settle on one more heavily than the other, it, it, it conversation there that I think. Uh, is, is photographed pretty well there. Do you love me? That's the first question. Peter, do you love me more than these? Now, I like to look at words. I'm like most people, Cheryl, you got a great grasp on the Greeks and Hebrews. i got to look that stuff up still. It's not in my, my memory panhandle very well. I had to look up the word love this week and see what that word love was. Now, this word love in the Greek there is an agapeo type love. It's an agape type love. But agape is a what? Does anyone know? It's a, it's a, it's a noun. It's, it's the conversation of God being love. God is love. Amen? That's the noun format of agape. Now this is the agape love. This is a, a verb. This is an action verb. Now I think that's kind of neat because when he asked Peter, do you love me? He's saying, do you love me, Peter, in an action verb concept? In other words, are you... Are you going in this love for me? Now, now the actual definition here uh, is, uh, if I can find it. Can't find it. But it's there. If I looked hard enough and didn't have an audience in front of me, I'd be able to find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. The connotation of love and will and purpose, as well as the affection involved, is commonly associated with love. So a love of will and purpose. Agapeo. You are my will. You are my purpose. This is the love that I have in me. So in other words, the question that's being asked here is, Peter, do you love me with an agape type love, a divine love, but is action filled? Do you love me more than anything else? Do you go for me more than you go for any of these? Is what he's asking. If you want to switch the word go there for love. Do you love me more than anything else that you are in action of? I love the cowboys but not as much as I love my Jesus, okay? I'll die for Jesus. <laughs> I won't die for the Cowboys. <laughs> I'll be actionable with my love for Jesus. Um, and I kind of find that an important point to highlight there as we talk about these three questions because, again, I think sometimes um, we get that confused. I think sometimes we do let a job mean more to me than Jesus, to us. I, I think we get that confused, that, that sometimes the love that I maybe have for my spouse, I, I put more love into my spouse than I do Jesus. And, and <laughs> has, does the world let you down? <laughs> does does the, the spouse let you down? Yeah, because they're human, they, they can. And, and that's why I find this to be such an important love to have figured out in us, to, to love him more than anything. Because as this world will let you down, you'll go, so what? Oh well, it's going to let me down. It doesn't affect me because my love is put in Jesus, not in things, not in humans. 
Part of this question that is the, the more than these, that it's often debated, you know, I've I read lots of theological stances on this and different sermons and people have preached this, and I've heard it preached where, where the more than these are, are the material. I'm, I'm okay with that, even though I settle more on the other side of this definition, but I've heard it preached, uh, Peter, do you love me more than the, the job of fishing? Peter, do you love me more than the fish, the money that might come from that job? Do you love me more, just, just blank, than the material? Or, or, or does it mean, do, do you love me, Peter, more than the disciples love me? Peter, do you love me more than you love the disciples? Now, I, I don't know where you sit on that definition. I, I, I can't help but think he's talking about the disciples there. But, but it doesn't matter where you sit on that position. In my heart, it sits well. Because Jesus is simply asking Am I more? Am I more in terms of love in your life? That's kind of an important question to ask ourselves. When it comes to refreshing our love for Him, have I let something get in my life that's actually taken away from my love for Him? And that's, that's what I pray. This, if this first question could do anything for you, it might cause you to get into your brain and go, okay, I need to let go of that more and, and love Jesus more intensely. Peter says, you know I love you. And Jesus says, then feed my lambs. And, and I can't help but think when Jesus says that, he, he's almost saying like, I know you love me. I heard you say that. But Peter, do you know you love me? Because Peter, if you know you love me, then, then Peter, you're going to take that love now and you're going to go to those physical things out there and you're going to be love to it. Okay? It, 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 that's, that's an important question for us. It's a, good, it's a good measurement question for us. How good are we at feeding sheep? <laughs> I mean, not, not physical sheep. That, that'd be fun. There's a lot of sheep in this area, by the way. Um, but his people. I, I love you enough, Lord, that I will take this love and feed your sheep. I mean, even, even if it's not a daily conversation that you have with somebody, but, but, but even the beginning of the process of I am in so in love with Jesus that I'm, I'm going to refuse to let you die in your sin. And I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to love for you, and, and, and do everything I can to try and be in your life. That's, that's one cool thing about PAL. You guys have a public fire department, and that, that siren goes off, and, and you go, oh, I wonder where the fire's at. You know, I wonder what's going on. I remember doing that as a kid in Landry. It the same way. And, and, and every time that siren goes off, it, it became a time for me to pray. It's almost... I'm not connecting this to Muslimism at all. But they have that little call to prayer. That guy gets on the room, you know, and they're singing and everybody prays. Whenever I hear that siren, there's a part of me that goes, okay, pray. Pray for the need. Wherever that's at, pray for the paramedics. Verb, action of love. I, I love you more than these. I'm being actionable in that. In that I love you more than anything, which means I can actually love you and, and, and serve other people in the community. And, and that's why I think he goes into this next question, because he, he, he goes on and he says, do you love me? Okay, he, he, you know, it's the same, it's kind of the same question, but this time he doesn't add the, the, the line of, of, of more than these. He just says, do you love me? I, I find that to be kind of cool. In fact, it's the same question that love uh, Greek there is the same agapeo actionable concept except this time instead of talking about outward stuff he just says do you love me here Peter because I think we got to hear that because because friends do, <laughs> do you think humanity can be pretty good sometimes at, at putting on the show of love but but inwardly they're just it's just not there I mean, they, they, they can say all day long in almost a superficial conversation, I love out here, I'm actionable with my love out here, but inwardly I'm not being very actionable with my love. And I've seen that before, not in this church, but in other churches where I've, I've, I've had people, I've asked people to do, that's why I always preface my, que my questions with, you can always say no to me. Because um, I'd rather somebody say no to me and find somebody that wants to do it than, than somebody to say yes to me and then do it half-heartedly. Because it's, it's just not done right. Or I've had that conversation where I said, well, you work BBS, and that person approaches it like this. Oh, I don't want to do it. I just, 
So I'm being big ass and so they teach the kids and it's like that. Oh, the Lord loves you today. Everything's good. And it almost does more damage because it's like, where's the love in that? I mean, you might be able to fake it out here, but if you're not really feeling it in here, how does that really equate to growth? And so when I look at the second question of internalizing the conversation of do you love me, he's taking it to a deeper level. He's saying, Peter, it's good. You can show love out there and, and love me more than all of that, but do you really love me here? In, in, in the soul, in internalizing that conversation of love. See, I think we need to look at that as a refreshing conversation. Because, again, you're not going to be very effective out there if he isn't first in here, loving, being loved in here. Because people do church all the time, right? Just come, sit in a pew. I, I think you can even just do the Bible. You, you open it up and you kind of read it out of, like, almost obligation. <laughs> I, I think people can even do worship where they just kind of, like, sing a song because it's a pretty melody. And, and, and none of it really means anything because there's no heart, there's no internalizing of the love inside. And, and I, I can't help but say, friends, one of the, the great refreshing points of this, even though I'm sure I'm butchering it, of the second question from Jesus is to look in the inside and, and say, how much do I love him here? Peter says, you know I love you. And, and Jesus looks at him and says, then, then go take care of my sheep. Again, another externalization of that love that he's just talked about inwardly. But I, I find that to be an important point from Jesus because he's even saying, if, if you're, you're not going to be very effective in feeding the sheep and teaching the sheep if, if you don't first love me. So again, friends, that's why I look at people and I say, we don't, I don't boast growing churches quickly. Never have. I don't, I don't boast and be like, hey, in the next three months, we're going to have a church of 500. And, you know, I don't boast that. And, and in fact, what I do boast is I pray within the first four or five years, we might grow with a few here and there. But, but we'll, we'll be a, a spiritually thick people, a, a spiritually grown people. And, and that to me matters more any day than numbers. And because to me, I'd rather you be internally a Christian then to you just kind of fake it outwardly and inside it means nothing. I want to look at the second question as an opportunity for Peter to say, okay, I love you more than these, but it's more than that. It's inward. It's deep. And, and, and then Jesus, he, he goes to the third question, which to me is where it gets a lot of fun. Um, he says, do you love me again? Same question, right? Except this love changes. The word love there changes from agapeo to the word filio. And the word filio in Greek is an affinity of, of friendship, of fondness. Now that may not seem as, as like bold as a divine love. I mean, those are some cool words. It's a divine love of will and purpose. And this, this word is more of a, an affinity of friendship and fondness. But in the Greek language, this is a pretty intense word. Because it's a, it's a connection word. It's almost like, it's almost like laminin. I, I, I use that word a lot lately, but it's the one cell in your body you cannot live without. It's a cell adhesion molecule. It's what keeps you upright and held together. Without it, you fall apart. And it's the one molecule that actually is in the shape of a cross. It's the coolest molecule in the entire body. It's God writing his poetry on you. When I look at the word filio and that affinity, that friendship, that fondness concept, it is, it is him being a part of you. It's deeper. It's not just surface words. It's not just superficial, I love you. It's, it's felt. It's experienced. It's in you. I mean, we do that in marriages all the time. I'm guilty of this. My, my wife, she, she's a reader. Books I would never touch, like Anne of Green Gables and stuff like that. She reads those books and, and she'll be reading them and I'll fall asleep and, and she'll shut it off and turn the lamp off and she'll go, I love you, honey. And I'll go, hmm. And, 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 and she'll go, I love you. And I'm like, hmm, oh. And then she'll like get up out of the covers and like bop me in the pillow and go, did you hear what I said? I love you. And I'll wake up and I'll go, honey, I love you too. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's like Jesus is almost taking it to the level of, Peter, 
Do you really love me? I mean, is it the deep, heartfelt, relational love? I don't want it just a surface, superficial love. I want something that is ingrained. I want it to be a cell adhesion molecule. It needs to be a part of you. And that's what I love about Peter's responses. In the, in the first two responses, Peter uses the word for uh, knowledge of iota, which is a head knowledge. It's, it's a knowledge that's just spoken from the brain. It, it, it could be read as almost superficial. Yes, I love you. I love you. It's without too much thought. And then on this third question, when he changes it to that, to that filial love, it's almost like Peter was offended, which we see in the text, that he was offended by the third asking of that question. And you could almost debate that the reason he's so offended is because he took three questions to ask it. But on that third one, he raises the bar. He deepens it. And he says, do you love me like that? That deep cell can adhesion friendship concept. And in, 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 in this response of Jesus, you know all things. You know that I love you. He changes the word from, from Ioda to Genesco. Now, I probably mispronounced that, so all the theologians out there will get mad at me. But it's Genosoko, which is knowledge, but knowledge that has been gained through experience. I think that's cool. Because Peter basically looks at him and he says, Jesus, I've been there the whole time. I mean, I was there when you raised Lazarus from the dead. I was there when they whipped you. I, I was there when you said, on you, the rock, I'll build the church. I was there when you said, get behind me. You know, and, and you, I was there. It's been tested. It's been prodded. And it's a part of me. I, I, I love my wife. But a part of the reason that I have such a strong love for her and it continues to be strong is because, man, we go through junk like, like, like kids having tumors. I have another kid that was born without the hip. We've gone through some tough stuff. The money ran out a few times. I told you that story. Colorado Springs, we had 10 bucks. I took the help wanted sign out of the store. I got the job two weeks later. I had enough money to pay the bills and take her out to McDonald's with 10 bucks. We've been through some stuff. And now we look at this marriage and we're like, yeah, we're pretty strong <laughs> because of that junk. I, I call it junk, but he's looking at it and he's going, man, those were trials. Those were designed. Those were designed to make your love strong. I can't help but think he uses that word knowledge because he says, I've gone through this. This love has been painfully and, and lovingly made a part of me. It's, it's a cell adhesion molecule and... and, and uh, Jesus looks at me and he goes, good. Because now that you more, love me more than anything, and you love me more in your soul, and, and it's like a friendship bond, he looks at him because, and says, because now you're going to die for it. And that's what verse 18 is all about, to indicate the kind of death he would die. And this concept of you won't be able to do what you want to do is that idea of, of how Jesus saw crucifixion. You're, 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 you're stapled to that cross and you are not able to move and go. You will die this kind of death. And after this, Jesus, Peter would be reinstated. He would go to the ends of the earth. Eventually he would die inverted upside down on the cross because he didn't feel that he was worthy to die in the same manner as Jesus. I, I love my kids. I love my wife. I would, I would die for them. I, I wonder, though, how many of us carry a love for Jesus like that. That I would die for this guy today. Did you know, statistically, more martyrs were killed in the name of Christ this year than any other point in history? No written, recorded history? That says something. There's, there, there are Christians out there that are willing to die. See, I, I hope the refresher today is, is a simple statement. I, Jesus, I love you more than anything. But, the, but, but I know that can be superficial, so let me take it to the next step. Jesus, I love you here. I, I want, I want to, if I do anything out there, I want it to be because I first loved you here. And, and Jesus, I, I love you because you're my best friend. You are a part of me. You've gone through this. I've seen what you've done. And, and my question that I, I end with today is, is where are you at in the love relationship with the Lord? What is, do, do we even love him in the soul? <laughs> Have you even taken the time to look at your life and see all the things he's brought you through to show you how strong you can be in him? He's, he's alive. He's well. 
and He's helping you become. So, so love Him today. Amen? Amen. Jesus, I thank you for this day. And I'm sorry, Lord. I, I communicated to you this morning in prayer. Um, I'm sorry for, for how, how, how human I can make these words sometimes. And, and so, Lord, I, I just pray in your divine ability, Holy Spirit, that um, enough was said, God, to get hearts to just want to relook at their love positioning with you. Lord, are we in love with you? Simply put, do I, do I love you more than that one thing in my life that I say I love? Do I love you more than that? And, and if I love you more than that, Lord, let it not just be a superficial, physical thing. I, I pray, Lord, that we would internalize it and, and truly mean it in our depths of our souls, Lord. Because, because God, um, you've got a plan through everything that we've gone through. And, and, and Lord, that relationship that we can have with you is so beautiful, so good. Um, but Jesus, we, uh, we need to refresh and course of love today. It's like a, a hot summer day and we need a cool drink of water today um, that we can feel just rip through our whole bodies. I pray, Jesus, that we would just simply just be madly and passionately in love with you. God, I, I love you. I pray those aren't just words. I pray it's everything we talked about today. Grow me, Lord. Take me, Lord, to those deeper places like you did, Peter. Take us all, Lord, to those deeper places. Let us have a week of love refreshment with you. And again, Jesus, it is in that name, the all-powerful, the almighty, that we pray. We lift it up to you today. Jesus, we love you. Amen.